are you? Hi, I'm good. I'm excited to do this interview with you. Um, yeah, how shall we go? What do you want to know? Well, the first thing that uh, we're going to do is we have some questions that students have submitted. Unfortunately, yeah. you know, the person cannot be here today. So we're going to yeah. try to answer the questions and hopefully other students yeah. will also benefit. But um, I just wanted to let everyone know that you have been one of the pioneers, one of the, yeah, the first student to sign up for FM2G. So I'm very grateful mm -hmm. that you are here and you're the one who gets to tell other people a little bit about your experience. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I was one of the pioneers and I'm really grateful to you. Uh, this course has really been life changing for me. I was able to heal a deep wound and that I didn't really have access to heal. And I saw the reason why I joined was it came up on my Facebook feed, probably like it has for some other people. And at that time, I think we were looking for 20 people to do your initial course. And I applied and I was one of the lucky ones to sign up. And I realized now that I was lucky because you had a couple of hundred people, I think, yeah. apply. So thank you. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and I knew that I could commit to five minutes a day. And I think that that's what appealed to me, that it was just five minutes in bed. I didn't have to do anything. I could wake up and start the program. And the other thing you wanted was a 28-day commitment. And I knew that I was ready for that. And simply doing those two tasks by committing to the 28 days, committing to the five minutes and committing to the pre-reading the night before, had such profound changes for me and here I am six months later still monthly doing the program every morning it's the first thing I do what am I grateful for today what am I grateful for and I also carry that same dialogue conversation throughout my day now which I absolutely did not do six months ago okay long answer but That's here we go <laughs> Thank you. No, I love yeah. hearing that Mm, it's profound work, you know, you know how much I love it. Um, okay, so shall I read out some of the questions from our student? She sure. submitted them and it's yeah, okay. Okay, so she wrote to us and said, let me read the first one. Right, what do you need to do in order to start seeing changes in your life in this program? Hmm, great question, I think. Um, the first thing that you have to do is come to the course with an open mind an open heart mm -hmm. and you have to be you know willing to accept things yeah um, you're gonna do a lot of there's a lot of self-discovery in the course so you want to make sure that you are very accepting of what you find you know at yeah. the other end when you start peeling the layers and you you want to come with an attitude of surrender, you know, being in the flow, you know, um, willing to discover what the universe is going to show you and you know, willing to follow where it's going to take you. I think that was the question. I'm not sure if I did justice. Yeah, no, you did. Absolutely. I would agree. It's uh, not having the expectation, surrendering, uh, being open. With this, with this work, in order to reach gratitude, sometimes you have to look at the pain, what's stopping you from being able to receive gratitude. So I think that's true. The surrender is really important. The other thing I would add um, is do the program. Don't take shortcuts. Just do the five minutes, do the pre-reading, do it as it's laid out, especially the first time. It's transformational if you do it step by step. And I think the way that, that. Yes. yeah, there yeah. is a reason, you know, to mm. my madness, as they say, because the first thing that I hear a lot of students complain is like, why do I have to do five minutes before getting out of bed? And I am mm. so insistent on that because some people mm. want to go get their coffee. They want to do the bathroom break and yeah. you know, they want to go yeah. back. And I, you know, I'm adamant about if you can wait you know, follow the system exactly as prescribed, you know, five minutes Absolutely. before your feet hit the ground. I can't stress how important that is because yeah. that's really what's going to prime your, your mind, you know, you're priming your body yeah. that's in turn going to prime your brain to, yeah. you know, release all those beautiful, happy 
healing chemicals for the rest of your day. That's what you're doing. You're setting yourself up for success for the rest of the day. When absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And picking up on that point, um, we have a lot of students, as you know, who are Greg Braddon and, and Dr. Joe um, students and a lot of others who meditate. We still do the FMTG before we do any other meditation process. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Start with your five minutes and then yeah. you go on to do whatever else is your is, you know, your spiritual checklist to do. Yeah. So you're not sure. really replacing anything that you're currently doing. All we ask is that you do this first thing, like prior yeah. to yeah, we have many students who do, and I think it's highly effective. Okay, so we did. Um, the next question she has is, what attitude would help you in this journey? Again, I think I cover a little bit of that. The attitude would be just yeah. to come with an open heart and open mind. And, you know, FMTG is not a program for every person. You know, yeah. I when you come in, you have to be willing to hear the message. And if you're not, then, you know, it's not for you because it's yeah. going to shake you. Um, it's going to impact your life because it's going to force you to look at your shadow and to yes. peel away layers of subconscious programming that sometimes we're not even aware we have. Mm. So I think you need to come to the program with a very open mind and you have to be yeah. very accepting of, again, what you're going to find at the end of that shadow. And yeah, you have to also be willing to participate, you know, to be open and vulnerable and to share yeah. your life. And some people are not, especially at the beginning, they're always very scared. And I think the beautiful thing is that even though they're shy, they start to see how other people are sharing. And I think very quickly they realize that you have a very safe, non-judgmental environment in which that you can you know share your life and and get a lot of healing from you know being in the space with other people that are vibrating in that frequency mm -hmm. and you know there's just mm -hmm. a lot of beautiful things that happen from sharing yeah no i would agree um absolutely and probably i would add like you said to be open and also to be non-judgmental because certainly my experience in watching my own journey and journey of other students is you will hit a moment where it's confronting because you are facing shadow. There is nothing wrong with that. All we ask is that you stay open to it and don't judge it. But feel free to ride into the program because it will shift and and at the same time sometimes people hold back because they they see other people writing wonderful comments other people have ha are having a positive breakthrough so they feel that they can't share how how would you invite them to share when shadow is present necessary to move through i know that you're you're very good at asking us to consider our shadow in a positive light uh, when you know when we have to consider when bad things have happened to us to be able to release that and see the positiveness of it yeah I'm not sure if I made sense then I, I you totally make sense so I'm going to approach it in mm -hmm. two ways one of the first things that I want to do because you touched upon that is when you come into the course and you start to read the reflections of other people a lot of people feel bad and they write and they say, you know, I couldn't connect to my heart or I couldn't mm -hmm. feel the gratitude or, you know, I'm, yeah. Yeah, I'm reading that people are having enormous breakthroughs. What's wrong with me that I'm not? And I think the first thing you need to do is don't compare yourself with anyone mm -hmm. because each person is at different points in their healing and we all heal differently. You know, we all, um, perceive things differently. So just because you're not connecting to, to your heart or you're not having the same, you know, visions that other people are having, doesn't mean that you're not healing. It doesn't mean that it's not changing you. You just have to be patient and very accepting and loving of mm -hmm. how you are going through this journey. So that, that would be the first thing that I would want to add. And the other one is that you know a lot of people are taught or programmed that is not good to face your shadow. 
why yeah. go back in time to relive traumas? You know, why can you just focus on the future? That's a big one. You know, um, mm -hmm. why do we need to go back in time and relive sad moments? And my contention is we can build a future with the same emotions and the same beliefs and the same habits mm -hmm. that got you to where you are today, trying to forget, you know, a part of your life. So no, you need a, a new set of tools. And I think when we face our shadow, it's a great thing because the shadow is what shows you how much light we have. You know, Absolutely. we need contrast in our life. We don't know, you can't know true happiness unless you have experienced, you know, sorrow right and grief mm -hmm. and so you can't see the light unless you've been in the dark so we need mm -hmm. to embrace the dark because it's gonna give us you know our, our way through through the light that we actually have so mm -hmm. again it's about Absolutely. being accepting and compassionate with yourself and to focus not on the pain but on the lesson because the minute you mm -hmm. focus on how we hurt you, you're going to be stuck in suffering and you're not going to be able to heal that. So mm -hmm. when you look at your pain through the lenses of a lesson or a purpose, your whole life will shift. Okay. So when, when you feel, you feel the trauma or you're remembering a process, either you have been the victim of a behavior or you're the perpetrator of a behavior, not to pass judgment on that on the actual behavior, but just to watch the whole process unfold and see what emotion comes from, from that. And then the exactly. lesson reveals itself. What you have to do mm -hmm. is you can't judge the emotions that you're feeling. You know, you, yeah. you have to allow yourself to feel because you cannot heal anything that you're not bringing to awareness, right? We can only heal yeah. what we become aware of. So it's a great thing to yeah. let our emotions pass us through and don't judge them, don't shame them because that's the first thing that we tend to do. You know, we shame yeah. ourselves for, you know, having gone through an experience that either we caused or was done unto us. Mm -hmm. So in order to heal you, you know, allow the emotion to come through, acknowledge the emotion that you're feeling because yeah. the minute you acknowledge, it will lift. If you suppress it, if you resist it, you're never going to heal it, right? So you have to allow the emotions to surface to a level where you can become conscious of them so then you can heal them. If we keep shoving everything mm -hmm. in, how are you going to bring them up to heal them? And so the danger in that is that you're going to go through life repeating patterns, right? You're going to continue to attract people, events, and situations mm -hmm that are gonna mirror those things, those painful moments, because the pattern is there to show you the parts of you that need healing. So invite them in. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Don't hide them, bring them out. And I think that that's what's so nice about the morning process is you're in such a safe place. You're in your bed, um, you're breathing, you're with yourself, and it's such a gentle process. If you surrender, you only go as far as, as you're able to or you know you keep yourself safe the whole time i found and then one process allowed a breakthrough to deepen into another for the healing it's beautiful it's such a it's such a beautiful journey that's a, that's i'm remembering my, my first time <laughs> that's such a great point that you brought up Liz, that yeah you are safe you have to um you have to remember that you're doing this not to go through the pain again, but to finally heal it. You know? yeah. So you're safe, you're in your bed. And the minute that you recognize that you're there to learn something from it, mm -hmm. your whole perspective changes. Like the fear lifts mm -hmm. because you're there. Yeah. You know, you're looking at the pain from a different set of lenses and you're not going back to change the event, because we can't, we can't change the past. Mm, right? exactly. What we're trying to do mm. is go back to change the emotion that you attach mm. to that particular event or point in time. That's what we're doing. We're Absolutely. trying to transform uh, pain into wisdom. Mm, absolutely. And I think that's, you said it so profoundly that we're, we're, 
changing our perception of the event. And then by doing that, we completely heal and release. And that was certainly what happened to me. Just by going back and observing, I was like a third person seeing it from another way. And the healing was so immediate. I, yeah, immediate. And, and has been, um, has lasted as well. It's, it wasn't just something that happened in the moment. And then I, I went back to old behaviors the healing happened and it nulled the event and I have no attachment to many things now. So, yeah, I yeah. think that that's what's extraordinary about this work. Mm. Okay, we have another question and this one was, which is an interesting one, I, I know I've had this issue. Um, we're all in different stages in our lives. What would you say to someone who is ready to change but lives with someone who isn't as ready or supportive? Wow. <laughs> yeah. <That's the> <laughs> and I hear that often. Mm. So the first thing is when you come to do this kind of work, you're coming to do it for yourself, no one else. And you don't, yeah. really, you don't, you shouldn't be seeking anyone's approval or support because the only person that matters, the only support you need is your own. Yeah. So, you, you know, you are responsible for your own healing. And if other people cannot understand that, that's okay because every person is entitled to their own journey and to view the world the way they want. You know, our job is not to convince every person to see it through our lenses. I think it's okay. You know, this process is about becoming extremely accepting of all things in life and not to constantly yeah. judge things or categorize things as good, bad, you know, or ugly because, you know, just because your partner doesn't see it your way doesn't mean that it's wrong or right. It's just different. Yeah. So you have to do Absolutely. the healing for yourself. And then all you can do is, you know, be the best version of yourself. And hopefully that will spill over to mm. the people around you and, you can talk about it, you can plant the seed, but that's kind of where it ends because it's not your job to convert to every person, right? They have their own healing process. They have their own journey to take. So I would say that it would be great, you know, in a perfect world if our partners were supportive, but, you know, we don't, we live in an imperfect world and that's okay, you know, as you, elevate your frequency what you will find is that you will attract new things into your life so new people new situations will come and you'll notice that other things fall out of your life and why is because we attract everything that vibrates at our at a certain frequency so yeah. if we're down low and we're vibrating at frequencies of shame and sadness and anger we're going to track things that are also, uh, you know, vibrating at that frequency. But if you elevate yourself in your now, you know, you're now operating from a standpoint of love and gratitude and acceptance and compassion, whoever is vibrating below you is not going to find you, right? So you're going to notice that you may lose friends. You may, you may, you know, um, some people may not agree and they decide to move out of your life and that's okay too, right? Because yeah. the whole point is that anything that is not for your greatest and highest good is going to leave your life. I mean, you have yeah. to work on that. Yeah. So, yeah. And again, it comes back to how we open this is to do this program is to surrender and to trust. And so if somebody is not supportive, they, it, may, it may come to that juncture where you decide whether they're in your life as you journey this or the more that you release sometimes allows them to release, especially if you have a, a contract with them, uh, a, a subconscious contract of behavioural healing that you're both there to be with one another for, that as you move on and release yourself, you also have the opportunity to release them. So I guess... It's really about non-judgment as well. Yeah. That's, that's, extreme, yeah. you know, and I think that a lot of our students that come, 
you know, their first thought is, you know, oh my gosh, I want my partner to do the same, to be the same. And unfortunately we can. And I think what we need to understand is that we're all our, we are all our, on our own individual journey, you know, just because we're married or common law or, you know, whatever, doesn't mean that we have to walk that same path together. You know, I think mm-hmm. each person is responsible for their own healing and for their own happiness. And then you come together as conscious adults and you decide to walk, you know, that path together, mm-hmm. your individual journeys together, right? But not, you know, it doesn't mean that you both don't have the same journey because we're all different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I sometimes think that this is confusing, especially for many of us women, because we really collapse romantic love too much into our lives. And, you know, a soulmate or a loving husband has to be these particular behaviors and has to be like this if it's real love. And of course, that's not real love at all. Um, it's certainly not for me. Real love is allowing you the space to be who you're meant to be and to become the soul that you're on this planet to become, you know, to do your own journey and to give you the space to do that. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yes, exactly. You, that's what, mm. that's what love is. It's just, you know, allowing the person to find their own journey and to thrive mm. and to pursue their dreams without, you know, holding them back. It's like, yeah. You know, if you have a stream of water and or a river, and you try to stop the water, you can't, right? Because yeah. you can't stop the stream, right? So the water starts to go around you, and that's you know what happens in 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 our relationships. You know, Absolutely. No one's yeah. there to stop the stream. You have to be open and just mm. allow the stream to go yeah, go through with an open hand rather than you know with a closed hand. Oh, oh my God, yeah, that's such a great analogy. That, it, that was just so my life for a long time was trying to stop the water that was trying to, to flow through me. Yes. And, of course, there was a backlog and, and the banks broke at one point. Um, yeah, that's so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, let me just hit on that one. Okay, and the next thing, um, in the last course, you included daily um, audio meditations. What is the feedback from the members about them and how are they helping them? Yes. So originally uh, we only had the lessons and, you know, you would read your lesson during the day. And then in the morning, uh, the idea was that you would remember the area that you were Mm. with gratitude as well as some prompters that were built into the lesson. And the feedback was that, Sometimes in the morning, they wouldn't remember what they were supposed to do. So that yeah. it interrupted their saying stay because they would have to grab their phone and re- check the lesson, you know, and remember what they had to do. So we develop audio, you know, five minute meditations and it, you know, it just takes you through what you need to do. And then you have about another couple minutes of just music. So you can just allow yourself to be. And the feedback has been great. You know, some people have issues with streaming, you know, uh, it would interrupt the flow, but the ones that have actually been able to listen, they they loved it. So it was great. And I think it's my voice and your voice. (laughs) It's not a meditation. Um, I prefer yours. (laughs) But yeah, I think the feedback is good. I think that people like it and people appreciate, you know, having. Yeah. I must say, I I, am both. I absolutely love them. And I also realize that for myself, it's better that I do it all the night before and not completely rely on the meditation that I, even now, even though I've been doing the practice for a long time, I still need to read the practice the night before. And then I have a more open space to my process the next morning. Um, so that's that's my little tip for anybody. Please don't rely one hundred percent on the, the meditation. Lesson. Absolutely, uh, yeah. because the, some mm. some of the meditations yeah. are actually different than the the prompters that are in the actual lesson. Yeah. Some are similar, some are different, but some are completely different. So 
it won't make sense, especially for new students, if you're doing this, and if you want to skip the lesson and just go straight to the meditation, it will not make sense to you and it will not heal you in the way yeah. that you think. Because for a lot of healing yeah. to happen, for you to make transformational change, you first have to understand the why of things. I'm a strong believer that when we yeah. understand the why, the how becomes a lot easier to achieve. So don't skip it. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And in fact, even in, in going into that, you have really looked at the why in the way that you structured the program and you've done the how. So for somebody like me, I never realized the overarching themes that you have for each week and each meditation and they're sequential. Like as you do the process, I guess after three or four months, you can pick and choose where the areas you want to dive deeper into but initially I think it's powerfully worked out and that's why it needs to be sequential and I think that's also with the meditations the audios why they're good they're not sequential a hundred percent to the the process that you've created yeah exactly mm. Mm. perfect okay now one more question and my phone's just gone off so bear with me everybody while I Get it back up. Okay, uh, her next question. Through practicing gratitude following the course, would we still see change in the, in the way others react with us? Uh, what is your experience of this? Um, I'm not exactly you sure, you know, <clears throat> what she was actually asking. Okay, I, I think she's, I think, but maybe it's the way I read it. I think she's asking, in, if there are flow on effects, even once the course finishes, do we still see the changes? Do they stay with us? Yeah. Has that been your experience? Yes. Well, the change will stay with you as long as you continue to exercise the habit of gratitude. You know, you don't go and gasp your car once Absolutely. and expect it to take you everywhere forever. You constantly have to go back and mm -hmm. refuel the tank. Just the way you have to eat and shower yeah. every morning, gratitude needs to be, you know, an essential part of your existence. Mm -hmm. This is something that, yeah, we Absolutely. do five minutes and yeah, it's 28 days, but this is a lifetime commitment. You know, it's not something that we're just going to mm -hmm. do for 28 days and going to put it on the shelf and expect, you know, healing to continue to happen. No. So it's a way of life and yeah, you will see changes as long as, you continue to vibrate in the frequency of gratitude and it will spill to other people because you're going to emit kindness and you know people are going to approach you differently because we're all energy and your energy feel affects you know another person's feel so if you are constantly you know um, vibrating from a place of acceptance and compassion and and forgiveness you're going to attract more of that and your eyes change like the way we look at the world through gratitude yeah. changes everything so we attract what we think about on a consistent basis and we can only hold one thought or one emotion at any given moment so if in that moment you're looking at life through the lenses of oddness and miracle guess what you're going to find you're going to see more of the same so if you're looking for the positive you're going to find more positive in the world. If you're constantly focusing on your challenges and your problems and the poor me, mm -hmm. you're going to attract more of that. So yeah, I think, yes. you know, to answer her question, you will attract, you know, what you are, what you feeling inside. Absolutely. Um, I agree. And also, um, even if you're not having a good day, I think you still, I certainly still hold the idea of gratitude in my mind. And so, like, for example, the other day, I, somebody walked in front of me and I was really mad with them. And my immediate thought was like, you know, to do something mean or say something to them. And then I just went, why do that? Like, you know, who are they? You have no idea what life they've had today. Um, they probably didn't even know what, that they did that to me. And I just went, who am I? Like, just give some love or let it go. And I think that that's also um, another way that gratitude has come into my life. Just 
seeing how easily I can go to anger or go to payback or go to lack or, and there's a whole other choice and conversation to have at any one time. And the moment I can slip into gratitude or compassion and love, it so much dissipates and, and life is just kinder and I'm kinder. And I think that that's worth it. Yeah. So that's another way that it, that it shows up for me. It's not always abundance and love, and, but it's a softness that comes through for me, which I absolutely value. I value the compassion that I have access to all the time. Yeah, especially now, you know, now time. I think that compassion towards others and, you know, more patience mm. comes because you have learned to give that to yourself yeah right because the yeah. way we relate to the world is in direct it's a direct reflection of the relationship we have you know with ourselves and if someone's mm -hmm. having a shitty day and they're reacting to people mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with us right it's yeah it's something to do with them so mm -hmm. um you know not to be reactive it's it's a good thing because you don't want yeah. to engage you don't know like you said what kind of day they had all you can do is mm -hmm. control how you're going to react to life you can't mm -hmm. control how other people are going to be but you can control yeah. how you're going to react in any given moment Absolutely. and you don't have to like also everything that happens in our in our, in our day you know just because you're starting gratitude doesn't mean that you're gonna be accepting and you're gonna love everything that comes into our view that's not at all that's not what we're saying what we're saying is that for everything that happens you can still find something to be grateful for at any moment absolutely absolutely I, yeah absolutely <laughs> that's why <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely been my journey. Okay, another question she has. How important is being part of the Facebook group? And yeah. how does the group benefit its members? So I, I think, you know, and this, again, came out of, it, it, as a surprise because the original idea was to just teach this course 28 days and be done and take the data you know, that I gather and write the book and mm -hmm. fly into the sunset. <laughs> what I found was that the that students, didn't happen. Yeah. It was the students mm -hmm. who said, wait a minute, you know, I can't believe this is over. Like, what are we supposed to do? You know, how do we keep in touch? And, and so we decided to create a community. And uh, I think the great benefit is that in those 28 days, even though it's not a lot of time, people come to this course so open-hearted and so ready to share their life and their fears and their aspirations that very quickly, even though we don't know each other face to face, mm -hmm. long lasting friendships are created. And we're not yeah. talking friendships of, in the, on the surface. I mean, these are deep because mm -hmm. this is a group of people that are sharing pretty much everything you know the troubles they have in their marriage with their children at work their illnesses that they have and how they're going to heal them so we go pretty deep and then for yeah. them to just go and disappear uh it's not doing justice i think it's mm -hmm. so important to stay connected in the fmtg community mm -hmm. because we continue to grow and just because we did 28 days of gratitude doesn't mean that we're not going to continue to face challenges and as yeah. we go through life, it's nice to have that group, you know, your tribe kind of thing where you can go to them and get support and talk about, you know, what you're going through and hearing their take. And there's so much healing that happens when we just have that ability to, you know, go to others and share, mm -hmm. you know, and hear how, you know, they would approach things. So there's huge benefits in staying connected in the community. So you have, so we have community and then we have the Facebook group that we run FMTG through and they're two separate things. So the one that we run the course through, which is FMTG, um, how's that, how do, how is that run? Is that different from community? So there's two different things. So there is the group cohort that runs every six yeah. weeks. So if you want to take the 28 full course, you will enroll into that particular group. And every group is, 
every cohort is different. So right now, for example, we have the May cohort and then in six weeks, mm -hmm. we're going to have a June cohort. But when those end, those groups get archived. And so, you know, you don't get right. to have access to that. So what we have created is a bigger umbrella, which is the gratitude experiment community. So you can okay. either start in the community and then, you know, might, you know, join whatever cohort is happening, or you could start at a cohort and then, yeah. you know, go back and join the community at large because that one stays open forever. And hopefully, gotcha. you, you know, you'll be a participant of it. And that's a place where on a daily basis, we give gratitude, we post inspirational videos, we educate people, uh, you know, when there is a new lesson or meditation that we want to test, you know, you know, we go to our community first and then we bring it into the individual cohorts. So, I, so people who are in community... Sorry, say that again. I miss. I, I encourage everyone to you know join the community if they haven't done so. Absolutely, and so you can jump from uh, a cohort, like a, a monthly program, going to community. Maybe you're in community for three months, and then you decide you want to go back through the program. Then you'll sign up. So for the next month, it's starting. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly. Mm -hmm. it. You could be in the community for two years, three years being part of, you know, a, you know, a tribe of gratitude people and not take a course mm -hmm. until you're ready to take it. And you know, they get notified, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, the, the people that are in the community get priority in any of the actual courses. So they're always yeah. a priority okay. because they're part of that community. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it reminds me of that beautiful healing meditation we did for one of our members who was going uh, going to have surgery and we ended up posting that in community and that was just really for me a profound healing and a very generous meditation that everyone participated both those in the cohort and then those in community so this gorgeous woman had about what eight six hundred people meditating for her yeah, as she went into surgery and it's oh, a testament of how <clears throat> people mm. form friendships and how much they mm. care for one another and so mm. you know that the idea behind community is to grow it so we have hopefully thousands and thousands of people that are yeah. you know are coming from different backgrounds and cultures and different points in their life but our common denominator is, is gratitude you know we're coming together yeah. to live a life through gratitude and that's powerful mm. I think that is powerful and I think having that as the premise to that underpins all of our interactions it also helps us support each other not to become victims and and not to to go down but to always see the possibility of greatness in any event that we're going through any hardship that we're we're facing I notice in some of the feedback that people have um, even this woman who had the surgery, some of the feedback that she got was from people from from an um, an empathic point of view. They had gone through the same process, and so they were able to lovingly hold and support her. And nobody did that. Oh my God, you poor thing! How terrible it was. We're here for you. This is tough, and we love you, and and we support you. And to me, it was so powerful to have that level of love and support coming at you uh, yeah so and I think one of the beautiful work one of the beautiful things that when you are in this community you you are among people that are already in some sort of spiritual path and you yeah. know you're preaching to the choir these are people that want to look at life through positive lenses these are people that mm -hmm. Um, that understand that real healing can only come from yeah. yourself. You know, these are people that are ready to forgive, that are ready to let go of, you know, whatever chains that hold us back. So, you know, you're not among people that you have to convince. These are yeah. people that are already there because they're on the path. And I think yeah. that, you know, because you know that that's where they are in their life, it becomes so much easier to open up. Yeah, yeah, I would say that too. Yeah, mm, beautiful.
Okay, the last question we have, big one for you. What is your vision for the future regarding FMTG? Yeah, wow, that's, that's a beautiful question. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, my dream for FMTG is that every home in the world understands the powerful and transformative um, ability of gratitude. So I want to see yeah. FMTG be all over the world, in every home, in every person, in every child. You know, I dream of converting FMTG and um, adjusting at 14 you know, for kids. Yeah. Because if we can influence a life at a young age, you know, when they're still forming uh, their thoughts, I mean, the results can be powerful. And for me, it's not about, you know, the fame or anything like that. Yes, I love to continue to write my books and to sell my books. But the, the, the driving force for me is how can I help others heal the way I healed my life? And if I can just inspire one person, you know, one life, then I've done my job. I think that, that's really where I see. I want to... I hope that, you know, through word of mouth, you know, and we get that a lot, you know, our students go through it and then they tell a friend and they tell their family. And so it's very grassroots, uh, the way yeah. it has been growing. And, you know, hopefully with the book and a publisher, we can really spread the word a lot quicker and wider because mm -hmm. there's nothing more that I would love than to have more people heal. Yeah, me too. There's nothing more that I would love. Um, and I've enrolled quite a few people. And, um, and the next one to enroll is my husband. I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> I have shown him the work. Um, but actually, uh, it's, um, a, I had to do the process enough myself to be open to allowing him to do it and, yeah, be generous to his process and to back out a little bit, right? Yeah. So. Um, and so I love your vision. And with that, I want to thank you personally for your incredible generosity at providing this program to date, free. I think it's a program that is magnificent and, yeah. and affordable to so many of us while you are putting it on this platform and being free. Um, and I know how much work you put into this and I also know how much you financially support this program so just generosity of heart and your big enormous generosity i just thank you and i think you're divine and i think you're beautiful and you. this is my thank moment so to say <laughs> thank you and really thank you it's it's a it's a gift that you're giving the world really so much liz you're so kind mm. yeah and thank you because if it wasn't for people like you and, you know, our students that keep coming mm -hmm. back for more, I mean, FNTG would not exist. So you guys are really the driving force of, you know, mm -hmm. making sure that this beautiful uh, process uh, doesn't die and it actually grows and thrives. So yeah. Thank you. And yeah, to no, I, you're listening. Yeah, yeah. We had a, quite a bit of a chit chat here, so. I hope that people do pick up on it but, and spread the word. Um, the, the work, to me, I really do believe it's powerful. It's a beautiful formula. It's simple in design, but it's also you know, simple in execution, but I'm sure it was not simple in design. I think that you have put enormous intelligence, intelligence behind putting the program together. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, and hopefully next time we can invite more students and they can ask their questions mm -hmm. and we can have uh, yeah. more meaningful discussions. So thank you so much. And My pleasure. We will chat Until later. Until next time. Yeah, Bye. lovely. Okay, Bye. take care. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Bye. Bye.